we are going to talk about the TPT slide today. We've talked about the TPT slide before, but I was having a problem with the TPT slide. The problem I was having with the TPT slide is I didn't have it on me often enough. I didn't have it on me when I needed it. So to recap a little bit, I carry a Spyderco pocket knife in my right pocket using the pocket clip. Love this thing, but I started to discover over time that the blade would get boogered up with tape and it would start to dull from all the cardboard boxes. The tape was the worst part, to be honest. That tape stuff is hard to get off a blade. And I just, I actually, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I've got some, no, it won't focus on that right now. I've got some dents in the blade um, that I need to sharpen out. And that's from using this for things that's not, I shouldn't be using it for, to be honest. So I wanted a utility knife to have on me. And that's why I got the TPT slide. I went with the TPT slide because it's designed really well. A lot of you saw the video and made a comment like, whoa, dude, that thing is way overpriced, way expensive. First of all, this is titanium. So yeah, you're going to pay for titanium. Titanium is not cheap. But this thing is so well built and so well engineered that uh, I have no complaints about the price. I was hesitant at first too, but now that I have it and I use it all the time, I love this thing and it's worth every penny. So we're going to talk about the problem though. The problem was most of the time that I needed this, I didn't have it on me. This was always on me in my pocket, as I said. This was on my wallet. But when I'm walking around the house, which is like 60 to 70% of the time that I need this, I don't have my wallet on me. I'm at home. I'm in shorts. I'm relaxing or I'm in sweatpants or I'm in pajama bottoms if it's the evening. Who knows? I'm not carrying my wallet around with me. So it meant either having to go find this or most likely what usually happened was I just use this because I do hook this onto shorts and pajama pants and everything. It's okay if you only have one thing, right? But if you're carrying a wallet too, it's a little bit overboard. So this actually thinking about this problem led me down a path to really looking at my EDC. And this is going to be part of a series. I don't know how many videos it's going to be, but it'll at least be two or three videos talking about how I've been rethinking my EDC. And to put that part really bluntly so we can get back to that or really briefly so we can get back to this. Basically what I did is I looked at everything that I had that I considered EDC. My EDC in general is usually smaller than most people's anyways, because uh, I don't see, <laughs> see the point of calling something EDC if you need a wheelbarrow to carry it around with you or you need a full backpack. That's not, you know, these I see these pictures and these YouTube videos of people showing me, there's all the stuff I carry. And I'm like, dude, that's the whole top of your desk. Me, everyday carry is what can I carry on my person? And a lot of times I ask myself, what can I carry on, carry on my person almost invisibly? I don't want to feel stuff in my pockets. I don't want to have to wear cargo shorts and feel things clanging up against the side of my leg while I walk. I want to carry stuff invisibly. I want it to be accessible, but I only want the stuff that I actually use that I actually feel I need. And it's easy with EDC to start carrying stuff just in case. Now, if you're putting it in a bag or something, that's fine. You know, like chapstick. I don't use chapstick all the time. Uh, lighter. I don't ever use a lighter, really, but it's a just in case thing. So I don't need those things on my body. So those can go into a bag or something into a pouch usually is where I put something like that. But the things that I need, what are the things that I have a problem with? And this was one of those things. It's like this was on a wallet and not on my pocket or on my person. So when I needed this, I didn't have it. So I had to start looking at ways to rearrange my EDC. And I'm still working on certain aspects of it, but the series will tackle some of the ways I'm doing it. This, this will be the first one. How can I carry this on me invisibly in a way that I have it when I need it? So typically this has, see that little sl slot right there? Usually there's a pocket clip there. I've, ha I've removed it, we'll get to why I did that later. But I had the pocket clip on there. So my thought was, well, I clip this onto my pocket. Maybe I can clip this onto my pocket. I don't want to put it on the same pocket because then things get weird when you've got, you know, you go to put your hand in your pocket and all this is clipped to it. 
So I tried the left hand pocket. But the problem with the left hand pocket is the way that I use my pockets is generally what I put in the pocket where I have the pocket knife is something that's easy to get out with something clipped to the pocket. You know, I can't put my phone in there really because I'm dealing with this reaching in. The phone is just big enough for this to be a problem. Plus, they smack against each other when I walk. It's just really annoying. So the phone usually goes in my left pocket. Something else like index cards usually go in the right hand pocket. They're softer, slimmer. My first attempt was to clip this to the left pocket. Have this on the right pocket, have this on the left pocket. But even though this is smaller, it's still the same problem. This is still something I don't want my hands rubbing up against when I grab my phone. I want it easy, quick and out with my phone. You know, if your phone's ringing or you need to get directions or something, you want to get that out quickly. Having something clipped to the pocket, it's a problem. So those two things weren't gonna work. Uh, clip it to the waistband, but do you really want this clipped to your waistband? Remember, there's a blade in here. So keep that in mind. Now, as I said, this is well engineered. You have to push in. iPhones, the iPhone is too good at focusing on eyeballs. You have to literally cover your eyeballs. So it's, it's really good at forcing you to push in before you can push out the blade. But it's also meant for speed of access because you want to be able to do that. You want to be able to get that out quick. Some of these utility knives, it's like, uh, uh, it's struggled to get the blade out. That's a problem. So that's, that's why this is done that way. But it's not impossible for this to get bumped and for the blade to come out. All you need is for something to hit it at this angle where it's going to push down and forward at the same time so take this an inanimate object look at that i just smacked it once and i already got the blade halfway out smack it again so doesn't require dexterity don't want this clip to the inside of your pants or the outside for that matter so what's left uh, to be honest for a while i wondered i'm like can i clip it onto one of these paracord bracelets and just carry it on the inside of my wrist but it's a little big a little ridiculous I look like an idiot <laughs> now you've probably already seen the solution I came up with paracord which allows me to carry it right there right between my pecs because this is titanium this weighs almost nothing. I don't even notice it's there. I put this on and it's, I said, invisible carry, invisible carry. Sometimes I've gone and went, oh, wow, I do have it on me. I'm surprised sometimes because I don't feel it. But this is still not a perfect solution. It's still not a perfect solution because the problem with the blade opening is still there. And to be honest, having it against my chest is even scarier than having it against my waistband where having the blade open think about that pressed up against your chest all you have to do is lean in one way and you're going to be cutting yourself open so what i contemplated at first was maybe putting a ranger band on here to stop this from moving but that kind of defeats the purpose of being able to take this out and employ it without having to struggle with it because in order to get the rubber band off you're going to be pulling it off and you got to put the rubber band somewhere don't lose it we all know rubber bands magically disappear especially black ones like ranger bands so that's not going to work then i remembered this this is the beautiful leather sheath that big eye design gives you with the tpt slide this is also included in the price by the way this is a beautiful leather case it's a, let's see if I can cover my eyes enough so you can see that that's nice, thick leather, but it's still flexible to get in stuff in and out of there. But look at how thick that leather is. This case is going to last a very long time, or this sheath, I should say. And the way that it goes in there is literally just like that. So what's that mean? It means that I can carry it in the exact same place. Now, you might be wondering, does this add weight? Yes, it adds a little bit of weight, but still generally pretty much an invisible carry 
I could feel it a little bit more because of the size, but look at it. Nobody's noticing that I have this under here. You know, it's not like I have a medic alert thing that's sticking out of my shirt. It's almost an invisible carry. I mean, what we're talking about here is about the size of dog tags and probably pretty close in weight to dog tags. So if soldiers can go to war with something that hangs in the exact same spot that's about the same size, that's about the same weight, then I can carry this on me all the time. And guess what? I do. And I use this at least five times a day now. At least five times a day now. All the times that I need it, I have it on me. It's the perfect solution for me. I can't recommend this solution enough. Keep your pocket knife in your pocket. Put this around your neck. And you're going to have this when you need it. And your knife is going to stay sharp longer. Your knife's not going to get boogered up with all the goo from tape. You could also, if you want, like right now I have the, uh, well, before we do that, that's also the reason I took the pocket clip off. It's go, it'll go in here with the pocket clip, but it comes out easier. You know, when it's around my neck, all I have to do is pull the sheath off. So it's like having a neck knife, except the opposite. Usually the neck knife you pull when you have the knife in your hand. You pull when you have the sheath in your hand. <laughs> but what I have in that sheath is the, I want to say blade, because it's not really a blade that they gave you. No, it doesn't want to come out. Come on. Only when the camera's on does this ever happen. They give you this. Now, it looks like a utility blade, except this end. You know, you can flip this either way. This is kind of like an emergency fork. Uh, I think the reason, one of the reasons they give you this is, number one, you can, you can theoretically cut boxes with this. This part here, the bottom where the blade would be, that's not a blade. That's not sharpened. This is just an angled piece of metal. See, look. No blade there. Finger not cut open. Ironically, I, cut, I have a scar on this finger from being a kid doing exactly that and cutting my finger open. Not sharpened, uh, but you could still open boxes with this because of the sharpness and the thinness. That's kind of, I think they get away with not being having to sew it as a knife by not actually including a blade. I'm not sure what the benefit of that is, but you could slip something else in there. I've contemplated maybe putting an emergency 20 in there. Um, nothing heavy, nothing's gonna bulk it up because that defeats the whole purpose. Two other things I want to say about this, though. First of all, this is not a perfect solution. You know, I talked about all the safety concern about making sure the blade doesn't open while it's on your body. Having a knotted paracord around your neck with no breakaway, yeah, that's a safety concern as well. This is a temporary solution. But if I were to get snagged on this, I, I, I'm dead. <laughs> Paracord's not going to break. So eventually I'm going to put the two little plastic breakaways here so that if something ever happens, it'll break away. Safety is one of those things that sounds nerdy and ridiculous until the time that something like that happens. And then you're like, oh, I'm glad I was nerdy about that because I didn't strangle to death or I didn't accidentally open a blade and cut my chest open. So consider those things when you're messing around with EDC. Uh, the other thing that I said I wanted to say about this is actually it's two added benefits of having this paracord. Number one, by having this on me, I happen to have some extra paracord on me should I ever need paracord. I think eventually I would like to put the, uh, I can't remember the name of the brand, but I think it's a warrior cord. I could be wrong. But there's a paracord that also has a fishing wire and fire starter wound inside of it. So that might be cool to have. But my favorite part about this, I did not realize this when I planned this out. It was only in use that I realized how beneficial this is. That actually makes this even better than I designs designed it to be. What's the big problem? with the utility knife, especially a small pocket one like this. You cut open a box and then now you need to fold the box. So you put the knife down, you fold the box, you grab the next box. Where did I put that knife? You always lose the knife. I always lose the knife. Check this out. One, two, 
three wraps. Full access to the blade. You can use it. Go to fold the box, drop the blade. It's right there. Never going to lose it. It's out of the way. It's not dangly enough that it's smacking around. I need it again. Grab it. Got it. Drop it again. This, in some ways, makes me think that maybe this is how this should have always been designed. So, if you're looking for a way to carry something like the TPT slide, or maybe exactly the TPT slide, give this a shot. Make sure you keep it in the sheath so you don't cut yourself. Get some nice breakaway clips for it. Set the length of that paracord to where it hits your right. Right there, there's the bottom of your pecs, there's the beginning of your stomach right there because it will disappear and you'll have it on you whenever you need it even when it gets hot in texas we got 100 degree weather coming up this is light enough that it doesn't get sweaty and rub up against you worst case scenario if it's super hot that day and super humid put it on the outside but you'll still have it so as you can tell before we get out of here this is an unedited video when I started this channel, I was doing unedited videos. I wanted to be raw. I started having fun with YouTube and playing around with editing. I want to go back to that raw. So I'm going to do some unedited stuff. Because one of my big problems with YouTube, one of my problems, personal problems, <laughs> is I record things and then they sit there because I put it off a day, I put it off a day, I put off editing for like three, four days, sometimes like a week, even though the video is recorded. So by not doing the editing, I'm accomplishing two things. I'm able to put out videos more frequently without having to worry about that. And also we're entering a time where uh, everything's getting slicker and slicker. And as AI starts to become more and more prevalent, things are going to get even slicker. And uh, soon we're not going to be able to tell the difference between something made by a human and something not made by a human. So raw unedited video. That's as close as I can tell you. See the bumps and all that this is a human being. So look forward to that. Look forward to uh, more videos about how I'm changing up the EDC. Like I said, there's still a few things I'm figuring out. Maybe we'll make videos about trying to figure those out instead of having solutions. And one last thing. I have actually two last things. I have a newsletter. If you want to subscribe to that, it's all focused on independent thinking. Uh, reading books that I read, sharing the most important part every week that I find in something I'm reading that contributes to stimulating independent thought. It's called Curated Weekly. You've heard of it before. I'm just focusing it more. And then I also started a new channel called Curly Notes. And on the Curly Notes channel, I am focusing on, I am building a physical settle cast in with index cards. I know some of you followed me for apps and I haven't done apps because I don't do apps anymore. I live in the analog world now. But if you're one of the people that's interested in that or one of the people that liked the index card video I did a long time ago, this is an extension of that, except I am going to build a full Zettelkasten. If you don't know what that is, go check it out. I have one video up there already. More to come. All right. Raw video, signing out. Goodbye, sayonara.